This is Kim Newlove, host of the Pharmacist Voice podcast, and I'm breaking format today just a little to give you a summer update. If you're new to the show, welcome. This is episode 108. Typically, I alternate solo shows and interview shows. In the solo shows, I talk about what I'm learning during my career change from pharmacist to voice actor, and my interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate for something, educate in some way, or entertain. My website is thepharmacistvoice.com. This is a solo show, and like I said, I'm breaking format today. This is just a summer update. I'll share what I've been up to, what I'm doing now, and what's next for me. First off, what have I been up to? Well, like any other mom, I'm trying to keep my kids busy this summer. Yes, I'm married, but my husband works a lot, so I'm the primary caregiver for our two teenaged boys. You'll hear me talk more about my boys than I talk about my husband. What is summer, anyway? (laughs) Summer, for me, is when my two kids are out of school. I live in Northwest Ohio, and my kids are out of school for about 12 weeks from the end of May until mid-August. The first day of school is August 17, and that's just around the corner. What do I do with my children all summer? We have a combination of structure and chaos. I'm a big believer in both. Structure gives order to my days, so we don't all go without sleep, meals, or showers. (laughs) And the chaos that I mentioned is really just another term for unstructured time. Unstructured time is important in summer, okay? My kids need to feel like they got a break from the 40 weeks of school that they just left in May. After the last two crazy years of dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, A summer was very much needed. My older son, who has autism, has summer school for eight weeks. He needs that structure during the summer. But it's not the entire summer. He does get some weeks off. Four weeks, in fact, plus a fifth week which we're going on vacation. And my younger son keeps busy with his sports practices, a part-time job as a baseball umpire, and, of course, hanging out with friends. When either of my kids is bored, or if I just want to organize an activity, I refer them to their summer bucket list. Do you know what a bucket list is? It's a list full of things that you and your family want to do over the summer. You know, for when somebody says, Mom, I'm bored. Do you have kids? How many times have you heard that? On our lists, we have all kinds of things. From taking our tandem kayak to interesting launch points to going to Cedar Point, one of the best amusement parks ever, which is right here in Ohio. I won't bore you with everything on our list. Although, if you've ever listened to my podcast, you'll know that I love lists. It only makes sense that we have lists of things that we want to do. If we don't get to everything, it's fine, okay? But having a list certainly helps in those moments when my memory fails me. And that happens sometimes, unfortunately. What have I been doing as a voice actor? Well, I've been working on my podcast, of course. I've been practicing scripts for my upcoming e-learning demo. I've been doing some auditioning. Uh, Not much, actually, but just some. I've been keeping up with my accountability partners. And now this next thing is kind of a big deal. This is almost like my big reveal. (laughs) I've been recovering from something called muscle tension dysphonia. Yes, that's a real thing. No, I didn't make it up. I'm hoping to record an entire podcast about it at some point, but I'm not ready yet. I want to make sure that I've recovered for several months before I share too much. Long story short, though, the muscles in my neck were getting super tight from narrating and it was making my voice sound like it was coming from my throat instead of my mouth. How does that even happen? I didn't know until somebody explained it to me. It's a much less pleasant sound from what you hear today, and it made my throat hurt a lot every day. So how did I figure this out? 
Well, first of all, I went to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and he referred me to a speech therapist to get evaluated and diagnosed. Then I went through voice therapy to start my recovery, and I feel very thankful that somebody knew what was wrong with me and what would help. I could not figure this out myself. So here's some background for you. Muscle tension dysphonia is common among professional voice users. What kinds of people are considered professional voice users? The list includes teachers. Can you imagine they use their voice all day? Radio personalities. Again, they're using their voice all day. Narrators, like me. Pastors. And I'm sure there's lots of others. But those are what I can think of right here on the spot. Anyone whose job depends on their voice is a professional voice user. I went to six sessions of voice therapy this summer, and I worked really hard every day to sound better. I'll stop right there, and I'll explain more at some point later this year. What am I doing now? Well, for one thing, I'm celebrating that my first audiobook was released in July. I'll put a link in the show notes. It's called Impact Pharmacist. Start your own wellness practice and leave your retail pharmacy job behind. It was written by Dr. Asha Pai Bohannon and Eric Bohannon. And second, I'm going on vacation. In fact, I recorded this episode on July 26th, but it won't be released until August 6th. At that point, I'll be in the Atlanta, Georgia area with my family, getting ready to celebrate my cousin's wedding. That's the beauty of podcasting. You can record things ahead of time, upload them into your podcast hosting platform, schedule the release date, and let things drip out. It's pretty cool. What's next for me? When I get back home from vacation, I'll be focused on catching up from vacation, we all know how that goes, and getting my kids ready for school. Plus, I signed up for a level two improv class. It starts August 16th, and I am so excited. It's going to be so fun. What does level two mean? It just means that I'm not a complete and total newbie. The improv studio that I go to has three levels, one, two, and three. It's been a while since I took level one improv, and I'll admit to being rusty. My first improv class actually started like 18 months ago, I think in January 2020. It's been a while. I know I've talked about this before, but improv is fun, and I really am looking forward to going back to class. You never know who's going to be there. College students, professional actors, business people, it's awesome. And it also helps me with my vocal variety. That's the whole reason that I do it. Other than that, I'll be working toward my e-learning demo with Debbie Irwin and Tim Keenan. Plus, I believe I'm finally going to get started on production on my second audiobook, and then I'll tackle all those other professional goals that I've put on hold because of summer, voice therapy, the pandemic, and life. That does it for episode 108. Thank you for joining me for my summer update. Please read the show notes to find the link to the audiobook version of Impact Pharmacist that I narrated, Cedar Point, and anything else notable mentioned in this episode. Please subscribe or follow this podcast to get each new episode delivered for free to your favorite podcast player right away each time a new episode comes out. Thank you again for listening.